The Epic of Kings or Shanama by Ferdowsi. Part 2. Then Ahriman imagined a device in his black heart. He took upon himself the form of a youth, and craved that he might serve the king as cook, and Zoic, who knew him not, received him well and granted his request, and the keys of the kitchen were given unto him. Now hitherto men had been nourished with herbs, but Ahriman pre, paired flesh for Zoic. New dishes did he put before him, and the royal favor was accorded to his savory meats, and the flesh gave. The king courage and strength like to that of a lion, and he commanded that his cook should be brought before him and ask a boon at his hands. And the cook said, If the king take pleasure in his servant, grant that he may kiss his shoulders. Now Zoic, who feared no evil, granted the request, and Ahriman kissed him on his shoal, Durs. And when he had done so, the ground opened beneath his feet and covered the cook, so that all men present were amazed thereat. But from his kiss sprang hissing serpents, venomous and black. And the king was afraid, and desired that they should be cut off from the root. But as often as the snakes were cut down did they grow again, and in vain the wise men and physicians cast about for a remedy. Then Ahriman came once again disguised as a learned man, and was led before Zoic, and he spake, saying, This ill cannot be healed, neither can the sir, pence be uprooted. Prepare food for them, there, for, that they may be fed, and give unto them for nourishment the brains of men, for perchance this may destroy them. But in his secret heart Ahriman desired that the world might thus be made desolate, and daily were the serpents fed, and the fear of the king was great in the land. The world withered in his thrall, the customs of good men were forgotten, and the desires of the wicked were accomplished. Now it was spread abroad in Iran that in the land of Thasus there reigned a man who was mighty and terrible to his foes. Then the kings and nobles who had withdrawn from Jemshid because he had rebelled against God, turned, to Zoek and besought him that he would be their ruler, and they proclaimed him Shah. And the armies of Arabia and Persia marched against Jemshid, and he fled before their face. For the space of twice fifty years no man knew whither he was gone, for he hid from the wrath of the serpent king. But in the fullness of time he could no longer escape the fury of Zoek, whose sir, Vance found him as he wandered on the seashore of Cathay, and they sawed him in twain, and sent tidings thereof to their lord. And, thus perished the throne and power of Jemshid like unto the grass that withereth, because that he was grown proud, and would have lifted himself above his maker. So the beloved of Ahriman, Zoic the serpent, sat upon the throne of Iran, the kingdom of light, and he continued to pile evil upon evil till the measure thereof was full to overflowing and all the land cried out against him. But Zoek and his counselors, the Deves, shut ear unto this cry, and the Shah reigned thus for the space of a thou, sand years, and vice stalked in daylight, but virtue was hidden, and despair filled all hearts, for it was as though mankind must perish to still the appetite of those snakes sprung from evil, for daily were two men slaughtered to satisfy their desire. Neither had Zoic mercy upon any man, and darkness was spread over the land because of his wickedness. But Ormuz saw it and was moved with calm, passion for his people, and he declared they should no longer suffer for the sin of Jemshid. And he caused a grandson to be born to Jemshid, and his parents called him Feridun. Now it befell that when he was born, Zoic dreamed he beheld a youth slender like to a cypress, and he came towards him bearing a cow, headed mace, and with it he struck Zoic to the ground. Then the tyrant awoke and trembled, and called for his mabids, that they should enter, fret to him this dream. And they were troubled, for they foresaw danger, and he menaced them if they foretold him evil. And they were silent for fear three days, but on the fourth one who had courage spake and said, There will arise one named Feridun who shall inherit thy throne and reverse thy fortunes, and strike thee down with a cow-headed mace. 
When Zoek heard these words he swooned, and the Mabids fled before his wrath. But when he had recovered he bade the world be scoured for Feridun, and henceforth Zoek was con, summed for bitterness of spirit, and he knew nay th rest nor joy. Now it came about that the mother of Feridun feared lest the Shah should destroy the child if he learned that he was sprung from Jemshid's race. So she hid him in the thick forest where dwelt the wondrous cow Permire, whose hairs were like unto the plumes of a peacock for beauty. And she prayed the guardian of Permire to have a care of her son. And for three years he was reared in the wood, and Permire was his nurse. But when the time was accomplished the mother knew that news of Permire had reached the ears of Zoic, and she feared he would find her son. Therefore she took him far into Ind, to a pious hermit who dwelt on the Mount Albers, and she prayed the hermit to guard her boy, who was destined for mighty deeds. And the hermit granted her request, and it befell that while she sojourned with him Zoic had found the beauteous Permire and learned of Feridun, and when he heard that the boy was fled he was like unto a mad elephant in his fury. He slew the wondrous cow and all the living things round about, and made the forest a desert. Then he continued his search, but neither tidings nor sight could he get of Feridun, and his heart was filled with anguish. In this year Zoic caused his army to be strengthened, and he demanded of his people that they should certify that he had ever been to them a just and noble king and they obeyed for very fear. But while they swear there arose with, out the doorway of the Shah the cry of one who demanded justice. And Zoek commanded that he should be brought in, and the man stood before the assembly of the nobles. Then Zoek opened his mouth and said, I charge thee give a name unto him who hath done thee wrong. And the man, when he saw it was the Shah who questioned him, smote his head with his hands. But he answered and said, I am Kawa, a blacksmith and a blameless man, and I sue for justice, and it is against thee, O king, that I cry out. Seventeen fair sons have I called mine, yet only one remaineth to me, for that his brethren were slain to still the hunger of thy serpents, and now they have taken from me this last child also. I pray thee spare him unto me nor heap thy cruelties upon the land past bare, ing. And the Shah feared Kawa's wrath, beholding that it was great, and he granted him the life of his son and sought to win him with soft words. Then he prayed him that he would also sign the testimony that Zoek was a just and noble king. But Kawa cried, Not so, thou wicked and ignoble man, ally of Deves, I will not lend my hand unto this lie and he seized the declaration and tore it into fragments and scattered them into the air. And when he had done so he strode forth from the palace, and all the nobles and people were astonished, so that none dared uplift a finger to restrain him. Then Kawa went to the marketplace and related to the people all that which he had seen, and recalled to them the evil deeds of Zoek and the wrongs they had suffered at his hands and he provoked him to shake off the yoke of Ahriman, and taking off the leathern apron wherewith blacksmiths cover their knees when they strike with the hammer, he raised it aloft upon the point of a lance and cried, Be this our banner to march forth and seek out Feridun and entreat him that he deliver us from out the hands of the serpent king. Then the people set up a shout of joy and gathered themselves round Kawa, and he led them out of the city bearing aloft his standard. And they marched thus for many days unto the palace of Feridun. Now these things came about in the land of Iran after twice eight years were passed over the head of Feridun. And when that time was accomplished, he descended from the Mount Albers and sought out his mother, questioning her of his lineage. And she told him how that he was sprung from the race of Jemshid, and also of Zoek and of his evil deeds. Then said Feridun, I will uproot this monster from the earth, and his palace will I raise to the dust. But his mother spake, and said, Not so, my son, let not thine youthful anger betray thee, for how canst thou stand against all the world? Yet not long did she suffer the hard task to hinder him, 
for soon a mighty crowd came towards the palace led by one who bare an apron uplifted upon a lance. Then Feridun knew that succor was come unto him, and when he had listened to Kawa, he came into the presence of his mother with the helmet of kings upon his head, and he said unto her, Mother, I go to the wars, and it remaineth for thee to pray God for my safety.